Okay, here we are in yet another version of the Mono Development videos. This project is going to uh, incorporate a lot of what we've learned so far, namely adding multiple controls to a graphical application, as well as using database access. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring up Mono Develop and create my graphical application. Mono Develop. Okay, and I'll pause the video while that starts. All right, here we are in Mono Develop. Now what I'll do is open up Project, and this is going to be the same project that we created in one of the other videos. All right, the GUI test. So I'll open that up. If you need assistance creating that, I suggest that you check out the other videos because that's where this code is kept. Here in my window, you can see that we've got the vertical pane, the horizontal pane, the labels, the button, and so on. Down here, under button dot underscore clicked, when we click the button, what it's going to do is change the text to button clicked, as well as console dot right line button clicked. We'll go ahead and save this, and then compile it. Down here, you can see performing compilation. And finally, we get one succeeded, zero failed. As normal, I like to open up a new terminal session. And what we're going to do is change into that appropriate directory and run it. CD mono develop projects, CD GUI test, CD bin, CD debug, and finally mono GUI test.exe. Okay, we're up. You can see that we've got the button along with the two labels. Right now this label says label value. However, when I click the button, what it's going to do is change that text to button clicked as well as write it back here. If you look at the code, that's exactly what we would expect it to do. What I'm going to do now is close down the application back over to GUI test. Okay. What we're going to do now is rather than simply saying button clicked, we're going to go read a table that's stored out on a Microsoft SQL Server database server. And we're going to do that through using the Mono uh, Data Library. Okay, We're going to create a data adapter, a data set, and then we're going to fill the data set from, the, uh, from a SQL statement. Okay. In order to do this, what we need to do is come up here to References and add a new reference. All right. We do that by right-clicking on it and picking Edit References. And all of that stuff is stored. If we scroll down through the list of the references, click, click, click. Oops, too far. Okay. Here is System.Data. That's where all of the data access code is that we're interested in is kept. All right. Click that and say OK. All right, now you can see that our references contains a reference to system.data. What I'm going to do, because I like to save typing, I'm going to add my using statements up here. Since we're hitting SQL Server, we're going to need both the SQL client as well as the straight data libraries. So the first thing is using, not user, using system dot, oops, data. Okay, and that'll give us access to things like the data set. And we also want to use using system dot data dot SQL client. And that gives us our SQL Server specific library information. Okay. So if we scroll down here down to the bottom, the first thing that we're gonna do is create a data adapter. Data Excuse me, it's actually SQL data adapter. Obj DA for obj data adapter equals new SQL data adapter. Okay. The data adapter takes two parameters. The first one is the SQL to run. Select star from O mono people, which is a table that I have set up. And the second one is the connection string. Okay, 
SQL Server connection string might look like this. Server equals 192. Whoops, I don't have my numlock on. There we go. All right. 192.168.1.100 with database equals mono sample with a user ID equals SA and a password equals SA password. Okay? That's a very, very standard, although I can see that I have an in incorrect character here, but a very, very standard SQL connection string. Alright, rather than a single quote, I need a semicolon there. Okay? The next thing that we do is we have to create a data set. Data set obj ds equals new data set. Okay? Pretty standard. Although you gotta be careful with your case. After we have our data set instantiated, let me scroll back over here. What we need to do is fill it. Alright? That's a very simple operation, because all we do is say obj da dot fill. Oops, obj ds. Okay, this will go out there and fill that data set. Very simple thing to do. Once our data set is filled, what we're going to do is we are going to tell the user how many rows have been returned. So if we come over here and say button clicked, we're going to say um, rows returned. But we need to know how many rows have actually been returned. Well, we do that by saying obj ds and then accessing the tables. Okay, we're accessing table 0, which is the first item in the tables collection. And then we're going to access the rows. And finally, the count. And we'll append that value to the string rows returned. So if our table, mono people, which is right up here, has 100 rows in it, it should say 100 rows returned. If it has two rows, it should say two rows returned. Okay, So let's go ahead and save this and compile it. And back over to our console. And I will go ahead and run it mono GUI test.exe. Now you can see that we have the original values as normally set. When we say click me, it takes just a moment, but ultimately it comes up and says three rows returned because my table has three rows in it. I could open up SQL Enterprise Explorer, uh, Enterprise Manager, and demonstrate that, but suffice it to say, this is actually what's going on here. Now that we have access to a database, we can expand our horizons ever further. I hope this little demonstration has provided you with some inspiration to continue on with your own ex experiments.